Shalom, this is Rabbi Klein from the Greater Miami Jewish Federation. The Shabbat before Passover is known as the Great Shabbat, Shabbat HaGadol. But why? And there are many explanations, and I'd like to offer one of them. According to rabbinic tradition, the Shabbat immediately preceding the offering of the Korban Pesach, the Paschal Lamb, and the Egyptian firstborn was the 10th day of Nisan. The Torah tells us that on that Shabbat in Egypt, the Jewish people did something that was incredible. God commanded them on the tent to take a lamb and to tie them outside the doors of their houses. This lamb, the Paschal lamb, would then be sacrificed by every family four days later on the 14th of Nisan. The rabbis expound upon this event. The Egyptians questioned them about this strange act, and they told them that God had commanded them to sacrifice this lamb that they would slaughter it on the 14th of Nisan, and then a plague would come and strike down every Egyptian. Now, according to this rabbinic reading, in Egypt, the lamb was worshipped as one of their gods. So the actions they took were very much political actions. To slaughter an animal was not simply about a sacrifice, but it signified a rebellion against Egypt and all of their values. This act by its very definition, is subversive and therefore very dangerous. According to the rabbis, the fact that the Egyptians did not respond with violence was a miracle. For this reason, this Shabbat is called the Great Shabbat. However, this is not only a statement about God's protection, which will be fully realized four days later at the moment of the death of the firstborn. But think about it, it's also a statement about the agency of the Jewish people in their own redemption. In this one act, the Jewish people were not passive onlookers being protected by God, but were actively participating in the redemptive process by freeing themselves of the dehumanizing and idolatrous culture in which they lived. Before God had completely extracted them from servitude four days later, they had begun to extract themselves. In taking the lamb on the 10th day, according to God's will, they were in fact taking the first covenantal act, following the dictates of God. In the words of one Midrash, they quote, freed their hands from idolatry and embraced mitzvot. The rabbis state that in this very act, they merited the redemption. However, we have to ask an obvious question. Why did they need to be merit merit the redemption. They were being abused and oppressed. While that may have been enough to punish the Egyptians for dehumanization of another people, it's not enough to make the oppressed people God's people. To do that, they needed to act themselves. They took agency for their own liberation, and that started a spiritual and psychological process. What's the connection between this 10th day and Shabbat? If this was just a coincidence that back then, the 10th day of Nisan happened to be Shabbat, we should just commemorate the event on the 10th day of Nisan, whether it is or is not Shabbat. But the answer has to do with the secret of Shabbat itself. Just as the rabbis state that one engaged in idolatry is as if they have denied the entire Torah, our rabbis teach us one that observes the Shabbat is as if they have fulfilled the entire Torah. More than any other mitzvah in the Torah, the Shabbat represents the foundation of God's mastery over the world. To observe Shabbat every week is to announce to all that everything belongs to God. In taking the lamb eons ago, they attested to all that the world indeed belongs to God and not to Pharaoh or any other master. The day of Shabbat underscores this same very truth for all generations, for all time. In conclusion, it's very interesting that this Shabbat marks the creation of the world, that Shabbat marks the creation of the world, but after the Exodus, it's also the reminder of Exodus itself. Think about it, on Friday night in the Kiddush, both reasons are given for Shabbat, creation and Exodus, and they're both given equal footing. Why? Allow me to provide an explanation. Shabbat is a remembrance of God's mastery of the universe and stewardship of all life. We rest as God rests on the seventh day. However, in the act of Exodus, this cosmic ideal is brought down into a world of human history, 
of empires and power politics. No person can dominate another person, dehumanizing them into slaves without respite, for they do not belong to them. The Exodus is ultimately a story of liberation to a higher consciousness that all creatures in this world are of the same creator. The sign of Shabbat that points to this is the dimension of rest, where even our servants and our animals and everyone rest. The cosmic idea of God's mastery is not simply a nice religious idea, but it's a political idea as well. As such, the liberation is simply not about God's miraculous intervention, but human beings partnering with God to liberate themselves. Before this Shabbat, when the Jewish people kept the ancient tradition to keep the Shabbat, it was because of creation, something outside and beyond themselves. Following this Shabbat in Egypt, they kept it also, and maybe even primarily, to remember the Exodus. The process of liberation of Exodus is a process ongoing because it's about society and it's about people. In slaughtering the gods of Egypt on that first Shabbat, they announced to Egypt and the entire world that they would no longer submit and accept this dehumanizing and corrupt human order, but they would be part of a struggle to reestablish the order of the world as decreed at the moment of creation. Once this happened, miracles did indeed occur. Wishing all of you a Shabbat Shalom.